Welcome to Coach's Roundtable and Ed Cody. Welcome our guest, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette sports writer, Steeler insider and NFL analyst, Ray Fittipaldo. Ray, thanks for joining us. Uh, this AFC North, what a log jam. Baltimore 7-2, and two. everyone else 5-3. and three. What do you make of this? Well, I think, Ed, it's, it's clearly the best division in football um, when you look at, you know, the overall picture, all four teams, um, you know, I, I think Baltimore is going to be there in the end. I, I think they're going to um, be in contention until January. Team to watch out for, in my mind, is Cincinnati. You know, Joe Burrow, that calf injury seems to be behind him. They've won a few in a row now. Um, people were maybe cutting them out early, uh, but I think the Bengals are, are going to challenge the Ravens. And I think, you know, for those wild card spots, Cleveland and the Steelers, I don't know. If the season ended today, they would both be in. But, you know, those teams are going to be playing each other a lot in the second half of the season. Um, they're going to be knocking each other off. So I, I think it's going to be hard for both to get there. But I like both the Steelers and the Browns' defenses. Their offenses obviously have to get a lot better if they really want to be contenders in the North. Well, is there a division that has four better defensive teams than the AFC North? No, I mean, there, there's a couple around, but, you know, if you're looking at the totality um, in the division, no. I mean, the the Browns and Miles Garrett, um, uh, Jim Schwartz is the new D.C. out there. He's got them playing really well. Um, the Ravens, I don't know if anyone expected the Ravens to to be this strong defensively. I think there were a lot of – there's a lot of hope with the new offensive coordinator there that um, – and Lamar being – you know, healthy that, you know, they would rebound and be a very good offensive team, but they've been one of the best defensive teams in the NFL. And then, you know, Lou Anarumo, the, the DC in, uh, in Cincinnati, he just does it year after year after year. People think of that team being strictly Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, but year in and year out, Ed, they've got one of the best defenses in the NFL too. Okay, Ray, let's, let's play a little game here. We're going to make you professor to the Paldo today and get midterm grades on the Steelers at five and three. Let's start on offense with quarterback Kenny Pickett. You know, Ed, they're they're five and three. They're in the thick of it. Um, I'm going to give him a B minus just because he's led those fourth quarter comebacks. Um, but if you look at his numbers overall um, and compare them to the rest of the starting quarterbacks in the NFL, it's probably a D or an F grade. You know, probably a D, but I do give him credit for having that clutch gene. He's been able to lead them to some comebacks, and um, that, and along with the defense, is the reason they are five and three. He's just got to get a little bit better, start hitting some open receivers. And I think that grade could potentially go up here in the second half. Uh, Ray, with the, their last eight games, five of them on the road, throwing for 150, 160 yards a game, that's just yeah. not going to get it done, is it? No, I mean, you're talking about going to Cleveland, going to Cincinnati and going to Baltimore. Uh, I think there's a trip sprinkled into Seattle there. I know Seattle's been up and down, but yeah, I mean, if 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 you're going to be a team that is going to um, not only get into the playoffs, we've seen them get into the playoffs in recent years, but if you're going to be a dangerous team once you get there, Ed, you got to have an offense that's able to score some points and be dangerous in the passing game. And they're just not that type of a team right now. Uh, Ray, why you're in practice a lot. Why does he struggle so much with uh, throwing out of the pocket? I see CJ Stroud, a rookie, and he stands strong in a pocket yeah. as a pocket passer, but that's not uh, Pickett's forte. Not at all. And, uh, you know, early in the season, Ed, Mike Tomlin tried to, um, really pounded into him to stay in the pocket because he thought he had happy feet and he was leaving the pocket too much early in the season when he was turning the ball over. Um, I, I wish I had an answer for you. I think part of it is the way he's being coached. And I don't mean that as a negative, but it's being drummed into his brain. Don't turn the ball over. Don't turn the ball over. We have this excellent defense that, that's going to help us win a lot of games. So a lot of it is probably him just being a game manager and then if you contrast that to the way C.J. Stroud is playing, um, you know, they don't have quite have the defense that the Steelers have. So they kind of let the reins be taken off him. And, you know, he, he's playing great. So, um, you know, 
it's a fair comparison in some ways, but it's also apples to oranges in the respect that I think Mike Tomlin has a little bit of a leash on him, um, at least in, in the early part of the season. But uh, yeah, I, you know, I think it goes without saying that uh, Kenny Pickett's going to have to improve here in the second half if the Steelers are going to remain in contention. All right, let's look at the, the running backs. What kind of grade here? You know, better lately, I think if I had to say overall, it would be like a C plus. Um, I like what Jalen Warren has given them. 88 yards, eight yards per carry in that last game. He's their most dangerous receiver out of the backfield. You know, if Najee Harris wasn't a first round pick, I think you would see Jalen Warren a lot more than you have. Right now, the touches and the carries are about split 50-50. I think we'll see that continue. Um, but I think overall, you know, I think Harris has been a little bit of a disappointment. Warren's been better than expected, so I'll give them a C plus. Wide receivers. Ooh, streaky, up and down, right? I mean, you know, George Pickens had consecutive 100-yard games, and then the last two games, I think he's had a combined three catches for like, I don't know, like five yards. I mean, it's, it's terribly inconsistent, so – um, I'll probably go middle of the road C. You know, I do like Deontay Johnson coming back. I think he adds an extra dimension to that passing game. They really missed him when he was injured. Um, you know, when you look at the entire group, you're not getting a lot of out of uh, not getting a lot of out of Allen Robinson or Calvin Austin or Miles Boykin. So it's kind of top heavy there with with Pickens and Johnson. I think, you know, that depth has to get better if that passing game is going to improve. So I'll, I'll go see with those guys. Offensive line. Offensive line. Uh, yeah, I mean, a little bit like the running game, I think better lately. I like, you know, the, the addition of Broderick Jones into the starting lineup this past week over a core four. I like that move. They were able to rush for a season high, 166. Um, you know, I'll give them B minus because the protection overall for Kenny Pickett has been solid. And with the uptick in the running game, I, I think there's a little bit of hope there that that unit will improve as the season goes on. Well, let's look at the at defense. What kind of grades here would you hand out for the defense? Well, you know, let's start with defensive line. You know, the Cam Hayward injury really hurt them. Um, the run defense hasn't been good overall, but with Cam Hayward back now, I, I think that you're going to see an uptick um, with that unit too. So to this point in the season, Ed, I'd probably go C+. Plus. It hasn't been great, but I think Hayward is going to make a difference there. Uh, secondary concern concerns me. I know Porter's played better despite he gets a lot of holding calls against yeah. him. But Fitzpatrick's out, no timetable for his return, and now they lose middle linebacker Holcomb for the rest of the season. Yeah, I mean, the Fitzpatrick thing, I, I guess it's good news that they didn't place him on IR last week because if that was going to be a four-week injury, they would have put him on the shelf and, uh, you know, they would have made a roster move there. So I would expect him back. I don't know about this week, but um, maybe next week or, or the week after. Um, you know, the Jimmy Porter's ascension, you know, he couldn't get on the field consistently. He was pretty much their fourth – uh, cornerback early in the season and now all of a sudden he's shadowing DeAndre Hopkins so I you know I, I think his improvement um, is really good there and overall the secondary uh, I'd probably go B minus um, and then the, the, the linebacking core let's take the inside linebackers and the outside linebackers together I think that group deserves like an A or an A minus um, you know the Holcomb injury is really tough he was just starting to come into his own uh, was leading the, the, the team in tackles before he got injured. Um, so Landon Roberts is going to have to step up. Quan Alexander is going to have to step up. And, you know, we'll probably see more of, of Mark Robinson uh, too here. He's he's the, the second-year linebacker out of Ole Miss who mostly played running back in college. So I think you'll see him um, a little bit more. And then it goes without saying the outside linebackers, Ed. I mean, T.J. Watt, nine and a half sacks. I think only Danelle Hunter in Minnesota has more this year. Alex Highsmith has four and a half. Some game-changing plays with that interception and that strip sack against the Browns, too. So both those guys are playing really, really well. Ray, always great talking to you. Let's talk again, hopefully, when the Steelers 
are getting ready for a playoff game. Let's see if they can keep it up, Ed. Hey, thanks, Ray. Always great right. to be on. I'll be right back with Alan George. High school sports, community events, all of your favorite local shows are calling the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel their home. Find out everything your neighborhood has to offer on Channel 100 or on YouTube. Spirit, town pride, local communities. This is the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Business Pro Wi-Fi from Armstrong Business Solutions is more than just Wi-Fi. It enhances productivity, tightens security, and is tailor-made for small business. Take control over guest networks with a branded portal, protect sensitive data, and manage staff with the WorkPass app. Business Pro Wi-Fi gives you customer insight, turning analytics into opportunities. Get a fully connected business intelligence platform in the palm of your hand. Business Pro Wi-Fi from Armstrong Business Solutions. I'm back, joined to my right by the Swami George Abraham, to my left, the Tiger Albert Campman. Guys, everywhere, playoffs, across the state, every sport, name them. Let's start off with boys cross country. Butler uh, senior and Notre Dame recruit Drew Griffith won the PIAA 3A cross country title with a record time of 15 minutes and 23 seconds. That's on a 5,000 meter run at Hershey, PA. Griffith finished the season undefeated. Look for him to have a big spring in track two. Uh, Jack Bertrand of North Allegheny was third. In 2A boys, Dale Hall of Hampton finished fourth. Michael Braun of Freeport, he was ninth. Hampton won its first ever 2A PIAA title. Grove City was second. Girls Cross Country 3A championship. Eva Kanastin of North Allegheny was second. The Lady Tigers, they won their sixth straight state championship in cross country. Girls Cross Country 2A, uh, Grace Plastino of North Catholic was second. North Catholic finished fourth in team scoring. Madeline uh, Meef of North Catholic, she was 10th. And in girls field hockey, 3A WPIAL championship. Pine Richmond won their fifth straight WPIAL championship. One to nothing over Peters Township in overtime on a game-winning goal by Georgia Roddinghouse for Pine Richmond, 19-0. It is their sixth WPIAL title under coach Donna Stevenson. And in girls volleyball, 4A WPIAL. Any surprise who won this one? <laughs> North Allegheny 3, Canamac 1. The Lady Tigers, they've won four WPL championships in the last five years. They're headed for, I believe, off the top of my head, I think their fourth straight or fifth straight state championship. In uh 3A, Hampton 3 and North Catholic nothing. 2A championship, Beaver denied Freeport a 3P with a 3-2 win over the Yellow Jackets. And a District 9 championship, Kane 3, Monotol 1. Girls soccer, WPIL semi, South Fayette 3, Mars 2. That prevents a 7th straight championship appearance for Mars. Mars got beat. Mars got beat. Oh, that That's a story, huh? Yes, yes. Uh, District 9, 1A title. Carn City Girls defeated Brockway 2-1 to one on an overtime goal by Phoebe Brandon. And in boys soccer, uh, semis 4A, North Allegheny edged Butler 3-2. to two, And then North Allegheny got upset by Norman 2-1 to one in the championship wow. game. Girls tennis, North Catholic doubles team of Katie Hardy and freshman uh, Bria Kelly. They finished second in the PIAA 2A finals. Now high school football playoffs, our top rushers, Luke Kramer, Carn City, 190 yards and two TDs. He also had 87 yards passing and threw for a touchdown. Hunter Shear of Carn City, 164 yards, three touchdowns. All of this in a 42-41 loss to Brookville, where the Gremlins rushed for 498 yards. They couldn't overcome the passing of uh, Brookville quarterback Charlie Kruger threw for 284 and five touchdowns. In their last three football games, the Gremsons rushed for 1,438 yards. That's a season for most teams. In these, in these days, the stats are out of control. <laughs> uh, the Italian uh, Beaufort of uh, Beaver Falls, 182 yards and 27 to win over Keystone. Evan Wright of Mars, 159 yards, four touchdowns, and a 44 to 19 win over Char Valley. Uh, so for Mars 9-2, and two, they take on Central Valley. That ought to be a good game. Ethan Pillar of Pine Ridge, 169 yards and a 51-6 win over Bethel Park. They have a rematch against Penn Hills. Penn Hills beat them in a regular season game. 
passing, Cody Mullen uh, knocked 235 yards, two TDs, and a 37-20 to 20 loss to South Park. They finished 8-3. and three. Brady Dippman of Union AC Valley, 189 yards, two touchdowns, and a 27-20 loss to Brockway. And Luke Goodworth of Mars, 133 yards. In receiving, Jackson Bauman of Knox, 7 for 90 yards and a TD. Troy Fleming of Union AC Valley, 3 for 58 and a TD. Caden Spencer of Knox, 4 for 44. Ethan Alwine of Knox, 4 for 42. And Liam Hine of Mars, 6 for 40 yards. And the playoffs continue. Championships coming up. All right, let's go to our stories of the week. The Steelers, 20. Tennessee 16 on Thursday night. There were more yellow flags on the field than there were terrible towels swirling in the stands. What were there in that first quarter? 11, I thought, early. Is, is that what it was? What are early out? 11 flags right off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Steeler running game improved to my delight. Harris and Warren had 157 yards combined rushing, where they only had 32 against Jacksonville. So did the offensive line improve, or does Tennessee run defense just stink? We're combination we're, of both. Combination, combination of both. Yeah, of both. I, I, won't, I won't give Pittsburgh credit offensively yet for anything. So. Yeah. Well, Kenny Pickett, not, you mentioned that, 19 to 30, 160 yards in a TD, winning touchdown. Deontay Johnson just had Ray Fittipaldo on, and I asked Ray, Ray, 150, 160 yards passing game with the next eight games coming up, five on a road. Is that good enough to sustain him? And of course, the answer is no. It has to get. It has to get measurably better. And, and the problem is we've talked about before, and, and Ray mentioned, Pickett is just not comfortable as a pocket passer. Well, you have to be for a pro. <laughs> yeah, well, he said Tomlin has stressed in practice, you need to stay in the pocket. But it's one thing to stress it in practice and another thing to get him to do it in the game, right? Absolutely. Well, there's a reason why you can't do it in the pros. You understand? See a pit, he would get out of the pocket. Absolutely. Yeah, run somebody. Yeah, the pros, uh, they run you down in three seconds. Oh no, my! Yeah, he's he's not a Lamar Jackson. No, they'll run down in three seconds. Good hey. point. No, that's everything. Yeah, you can't run away from those guys. Hey, Will Levis of the of the Titans was twenty two of thirty nine, two hundred sixty two yards. How do you guys assess him? What do you think about his future? Well, I was wrong. Just was watching him play. I thought he couldn't play a lick. Oh, and he's looked good in two. He's games. got a good arm, doesn't looked, he? He's looked good in two games. I thought he stood in the pocket against a good pass. That's why I thought he looked good. Yeah, Pittsburgh was rushing him. And he, and he stood, stood there. there. And he almost took him down the field at the end. Yes, he did. Did anyone watch that game and yeah. think, would I switch QBs in a minute? No. I, mean, I, I That's the first thing I thought of. Yeah. I'd give him two pickets for him. Uh, you, you know what? I, if that pass had been just like a, a game of inches, six more inches up, it's it's a winning touchdown. Right. Uh, so the Steelers five and three. Their next game is Green Bay three and five. Green Bay 20, the Rams three. Jordan Love. 20 of 26 for 228. I, I, I think the Steelers are favored only by three. three. Yes, moment. And now, it looks like a win on paper for the Steelers. I think Green Bay's run defense is much better than what Tennessee oh, way presented. But can can Love deliver against the Steelers? That's always the question for every game. The Steelers yeah. play. Can they? Can the other quarterback hold up against their pass rush? And uh, Pittsburgh tries to win that way. You know, going into the game, they're trying to win the game. They're trying to win defensively, and they, they depend on their punting and kicking game, Ooh. field position. It's really old-time football. It's what you it know is. that line. If they're getting three or four for the home field, which Pittsburgh has a great yeah. home field, that means it's a pick em game. I didn't see I that agree game with you. that. Hey, some injury serious middle linebacker Holcomb who's having yeah, a real good year is mm -hmm. out for the year. And uh, no word yet on uh, Minka Fitzpatrick with the hamstring if he's coming back. I know they got – Cam Hayward back, but boy, he looked winded in, in that was. game. I thought they played him way too much. Should have spelled him off. I just more. hope they rescue their wide receiver. I'm worried about him <laughs> being captive down there. Pickens. Oh, yeah, I feel geez. bad for Pickens him. is yeah, brooding bad. on the bench. Yeah. Is he captive? He was not celebrating he the win. He's captive. Yeah. 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 He, he was he, not no, celebrating no, no the win. He's no good. He's no good to the core. Yeah. He he's no good to the core. I, what, what can you say? I know. I, you know I, I'm going to say this. I might be I put this a little bit on Tomlin. I think he, he's not tough enough with these guys with the way they act sometimes and brood on the field, and he's had a couple of key penalties against him. I, I just think he needs to come down and send a message to these guys. What do you think, what, what would that do? 
Well, I, hey, if you have to, if you have to sit them a little bit. You sit <laughs> you them. No, no, pro court coach does that. Well, There's not one coach in the pros even thinks well, about. Well, then that you guy. live with that. You yeah, know? you have to. Then you no, live with that. No, that's it, Eddie. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's go to the AFC <laughs> uh, uh, North log jam. I, I don't know if I've ever seen a division like this. The Ravens are seven and two, the best start in franchise history. They blew out Seattle 37-3, Cincy 5-3, 24-18 over the Bills. It's not just Joe Burrow. This defense is very good for them. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Cleveland 5-3, Deshaun Watson returns. They shut out Arizona 27-0. And the Steelers 5-3. In the beginning of the year, I said 9-8 or 10-7 and to win a division. Looks like you may have to win 10 to make the playoffs. Yeah, that league is really, really Good. I'm talking about really good. Uh, four, four of the my, best defensive my, teams in the league. Right now, uh, looking at the league, I would be surprised if the Bengals play the uh, if it was capable play the Ravens in the in, in the AFC final. I don't I don't know if you can do that. Yeah, they can. Get that. Sure they can. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, those are two teams I think are the best two teams right now. Well, while you look now, the Steelers' last eight games, five are on the road. They're at Cleveland, Baltimore, Cincy. Two. They're at Seattle. Tough. And Indy, man, you watch Indy play. Really? They got some, they got a pretty good defense too. It, so they got some tough games on the road. Indy serendipitously got lucky when their quarterback got hurt. The same thing happened to Atlanta. The backups were better in both places. Yes, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, not long term. Right. But if you were a member of that team, like this year, if you're in the Titans, you got to say, where was this kid four weeks ago when Daniel was throwing the ball to the other team? Well, the thing about Indy, they get a very good offensive line, and they got a good running attack right. as back, and their defense is surprisingly good. Well, they had good. two pick six this Sunday. You're not going to lose. So when you look down the stretch, who's going to be the outside looking in in this division? Come three. Correct me from three teams can make the playoffs out of that division. Four can. All four can. Sure. Is that right? Got to have okay. all three wild cards. On paper, the Steelers yeah. are the worst of the four. Yeah. On to me. And chances yeah, I mean, are, you know. one of those is going to be Miami or Buffalo. All, all four of them so have. I would say not. Yeah. But I mean, it, no, right. you said can it. Right. Yes. All four have good defenses. But when you rate the offenses, the Steelers are at the yeah, bottom. Yeah, no question. That's why I, I would say right now, on paper coming in. But, but we, you know, we talk about all these other good teams, though. So. Steelers having as many losses as all these all these teams are measuring. Buffalo's lost four times. Yeah, yeah. Miami's beaten nobody. Yeah. B- Buffalo, I mean, Buffalo to me, these the, teams the, are, the, the window is 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 done. The, the it's too much. Just Josh Allen can't do it all all the time. Mm-hmm. And just thrown to one receiver. It, it seems like there's no other We're option but no. digs. And you mentioned something there about these teams. You know uh, the the league, the division that Pittsburgh's in. It's really strong, but they have a very very strong defense and kicking game. Yes. And they've already beaten two of those teams. No, the Steelers have the best. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> the best the, of those two combined. I'm talking about the be, combination. That combination. Yeah. They're so right. lousy offensively yeah. that it's hard to they win. They have to be. Yeah. Or they, they could be 0-8. Oh, yeah, they could be. Yes. No, no. Uh, right. Listen, the game that stunned, I uh, was Houston 39 and Tampa Bay 37. Oh, C.J. Stroud, he's already, to me, rookie of the year offensively. Easily. 470 yards, five TDs. He has that pocket presence. I don't. I didn't see that coming. Did you? That pocket it, presence right, he, for him. That's good. I mean, if you did, you guess him. He stands in there, and it's something that I. I know. Just, just say, put him on the Steelers in the offense. The way he throws the ball, how yeah, much better would they be? Yeah, he's uh, very accurate. Accuracy is the name of the game in the pros. And he's very accurate. And and uh, in Kansas City. Uh, 21, Miami, 14. Here's the team, for whatever reason, I guess because of Mahomes, they get no credit for their defense. Well, they, they are now, though. They are, now, now so? Across the country. Oh, yeah, across the country, yeah. they're saying the, the yeah. defense is carrying them. Not their offense hasn't been very yeah. good. Yeah. Their defense is carrying them, for yeah. sure. Hey, in, in other NFL news, Josh McDaniels fired by Vegas. I'm no Josh McDaniels fan, but is there a more inept franchise in the What is it, Seven coaches, 13 years, yes. four general managers disrupting their, their – uh, a uh, scouting uh, department. As long as Davis is there, I don't think they ever get it right. Yeah, Oakland's on that. But I, I will add another thought to it that people continue to think that if I, if you coach like Belichick, you're going to win. All his assistants stink. They all go someplace. Yeah. They're, they're good win. assistants. Yeah, that's, that's it. They're, 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 they automatically think that. Some guys are made to be assistants and not head yeah, coaches. Uh, that's uh, just uh, the way. That's just the way it no, is. Absolutely right. And another Achilles, uh, Giants quarterback David Jones, he's torn Achilles. Now third. I, did you ever remember this happening before with no, all these injuries? How about where his knee went earlier? He just dropped back. There was no one there, and he collapsed. 
Well, let's move on to college football. Yeah. Number five, Slippy Rock University, 56, and Sharon Stone's alma mater, Edinburgh, 18. That's also Matt's alma mater. He tries to go to every homecoming looking for Sharon Stone. He hasn't met her yet. <laughs> <laughs> she goes look for Matt, too. I think she goes. <laughs> hey, quarterback Braden Long, 23 of 27, 400 yards, five touchdowns. Man. Wide receivers, Cohen Russell, six for 180, three TDs. Kyle Sheets, five for 104. And a t I want to see the other Division II team that has a better passing attack than the Rock. Well, we're going to find out in the playoffs. That's what Coming they up, say. Hey, all you got to do is look at the Bears. And they're yeah. the kind of talent that he's playing against, too. Well, next uh, week they're in the PSAC championship game at uh, Kutztown. Yeah. Kickoff at noon, the Rock 10-0. and 0. And in uh, Division Three, uh, number 20, Grove City 9-0. and 0. They had a bye. I think mm -hmm. they have... Yeah. Uh, Till this this oh, week, mm. they ought to mop them oh, up. My goodness. And uh, how about uh, Florida State twenty four, Pitt seven. Pitt is a bad team that is undisciplined with a ton of penalties. They're so bad offensively. They were 0, 0 for ten on third down conversions. Uh, the most penalized team in the ACC. And I don't think it matters who's quarterback. Mumford catches a pass, runs eighty seven yards, fumbles at the Florida State one where Pitt could have taken a 14-10 lead in the half. So look, look, uh, Christian uh, 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 Veyer, he was 15-35, uh, <coughs> 344 yards in his last two games. He's 29-64 he's, uh, for 388 yards and five interceptions. Does it matter who's a quarterback for Pitt? I look for Signet to get fired. I really do. I, 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 it seems like there's a real disconnect between him and Arduzzi. He would be the fifth O.C. fired in nine, that's what nine I years. Do. I think he's going to fire him. Yeah. Uh, one thing for sure, Georgia said on previous shows, but it really comes out clearly, Pickett saved Narduzzi. Absolutely. It was Absolutely. a complete savior. He had one good year. He had one really good yeah, year. Know. Okay, Pitt's not going <clears> to play <throat> Syracuse and Yankee Stadium. Uh, Syracuse started off 4-0. They're now 4-5. Their last five games they've lost, they scored about 50 points. They lost to B.C., 17 to 10. They threw for 37 yards. There were fifth grade teams around the country Absolutely. that threw for more than 37 yards. I saw them. They're bad. All you got to know is Pitt's favorite over Syracuse. Yeah. That, that tells you how bad Syracuse is. Final score Pitt 12, Syracuse 9. <laughs> Wouldn't doubt it. Hey, Penn State demolished Maryland 51 to 15. Drew Alari had some pretty good back to back games. But now here comes another. All those test games mean zero. That's against, right. <laughs> against number two, Michigan. Uh, no one will shake uh, Harbaugh's hand yeah, after the games. Really so uh, this game at noon, this is not another chance, another test for Franklin. He, he's it's big for him. He can't, he I know. Can't, I, can't I, beat I, these I know he's not sleeping at night because he he needs one of these badly, really. And uh, good for West Virginia. They beat BYU thirty-seven is seven. The Mountaineers rush for three hundred and thirty-six yards or six and three on the season. And thank God, hey North Carolina. Got back on the winning track. They beat Campbell 59 to 7. Was that Campbell Soup or Campbell Beef? Campbell Beast Campbell. Campbell. That was it, Campbell, it, Campbell. It was it was one of them. Hey, that's it for us. We've run out of time. We'll see you next week. For over two decades, Zoom Internet has been a leader in broadband. And now, we're building the network of the future with 10G. 10 times faster than gig speed internet. Able to support the limitless demand of the future. Providing advanced security for connected devices. Our fiber network is unmatched. Zoom from Armstrong. The internet of tomorrow is here today.